Hi, my name is Bill Carmody and I'm the Marketing Whisperer. Today on the program, I have Elizabeth Engen. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Bill, how are you? I am great. So I'm so excited to talk to Elizabeth today because she is the foremost expert on this idea of reputation management. And so really what's fascinating to me is that you are no longer what you say you are, it's whatever Google says you are is who you truly are. So if you don't like what Google says, you really need to pay attention today to Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. So Elizabeth, just give me a quick background. Uh, I know you have a company. It's I believe it's the Ninjas. What, what, what was the Ninja the Ninja piece? Sorry. The company's name is Premier SEO Ninjas, and I get a lot of great feedback. A lot of people love the name. It took two minutes to come up with the name. My <laughs> mentors told me, you know, just pick a name, just get going. And so I just picked the name. And we're located in Minneapolis, and we do business in 19 countries around the world. Beautiful. So let's just kick this off. So a lot of people have a hard time really managing their online reputations. So tell me a little bit about sort of what you like to do to support people to build out their on online reputations. Well, that's a great question. And I tell people because I, so the reason why I'm so passionate about reputation management is that early on in my business, someone chose not to do business with me because they did a Google search and they said, gosh, not much comes up when we do a Google search for you. And in their eyes, and they did, he didn't say this, but in his eyes, he thought that meant that I wasn't trustworthy. My company wasn't trustworthy. Maybe that meant that I was kind of a fly by night kind of organization or company and I wouldn't be around for that long. And you know, that's not the case. And I personally have chosen not to do business with people that, that don't have a good online presence either. So I think a lot of people these days are into social media and you know, the presence there, which is very, very important to get your content out there information to show that you're the expert. But I think it's really important to have a very good positive image online. And what that means is that you preferably you have some media speaking engagements that shows that you know, you're wanted, that your expertise is wanted. It's important for your website to be in the first couple of position, one or two positions if you have a couple of websites. Uh, the kind of the kiss of death is if you are, if there's a resounding silence when someone does a Google search for you, or if if they find everybody but you. So my name is Elizabeth Engen. So there are a few other Elizabeth Engens out there. It's important when people do a Google search for me, they can find my websites and they can find my LinkedIn page above everybody else's because if they want reputation management services or SEO services, they don't want to find everybody else and not be able to find me. No, that's great. I'll tell you, ever since I first, I went online in 1994, so I was one of the early pioneers in digital marketing, and ever since that time, I've been fighting it out with Bill Carmody, the Stanford basketball coach. He is way more popular than me, but we've been fighting it out for position number one and two for years. <laughs> so it's fantastic. I don't think he even knows he's in a battle. It's just always he's got great content. So, uh, th so that brings me to the point where when businesses are trying to elevate themselves on Google, what are some of the things you tell them to do and recommend? that they focus on so that they can elevate to those top positions that they're so desiring? Well, I typically tell people to really pay attention to their reviews, which is not, doesn't answer your question, but I think it's important to pay attention to your reviews because it's another kiss of death if people read, because everybody reads reviews, especially for, you know, entertainment, for restaurants, for all different kinds of businesses, people are sure. always reading reviews. And they want to see something positive. Now, of course, if you have a lot of reviews, I think it's natural to have someone, not to have a perfect five-star review, but something that is, you know, that, that's, that's four or above. And that it's, you don't have a whole lot of reviews that say there's no customer service or there's bad service or something that reflects badly on you. So I think what's important, what I like to tell businesses is, get your content and information out there. And it's important to be publicized on the high domain authority sites. Now, if you've never done SEO to your website, you can try all you want to try to be ranking at the top for your name, for your brand name. But if there's other companies 
with the same or similar name unless your your website has a higher domain authority I don't want to get too technical but unless you can outpace that, that competition with the weight we call it the weight of the move then then you're not going to do that so just getting good quality content out there and again media outlets is a great way of doing that if uh, if not everybody can be on CNBC or you know the, the the really popular NBC or you know all those media things but if you can be interviewed or be on TV anything that has a, a lot of authority and then so if people go do a Google search for your business or your name that has high authority and they're gonna find that so basically just the more content you can put out there and kind of drown out um, everybody else that might have your own name or brand name and again you know the the most difficult thing for a company is if they get a bad review like if somebody does a Google search and they find someone that's something that's a scam report you don't want that you know that right. means that you're in big trouble obviously there and so the way to combat that is just drowning that out and you don't you never get rid of it but you can push it down and then push up good content I hope that makes sense. So, no, it makes perfect sense. So let's dig into this a little deeper. So what uh, there's there's the bad reviews you're trying to push down, but then just generally, one of the things you mentioned was putting a lot of content out there. One of the things I just wrote about in Forbes was this idea that we're hitting a saturation point in content marketing in the sense that a lot of people have gotten the message and they're putting out content. So what I'm gonna do is go one step further and say quality content. Let's yeah. talk about sort of what's the kind of content that individuals need to be developing Thing to really support their businesses well I I personally believe it's what whatever goods or products that you're selling it has to be you have to look or be seen as the expert in that space so for SEO purposes reputation management obviously is a perfect fit mm -hmm. because uh, pe that people do a Google search and so it, it always has to relate to what you want to be selling more of. Got it. So that, that would be more of the keywords of what people are searching for your business. Is that right? That is one way, but obviously, you know, in terms of reputation management, people are, are searching for the brand um, or the person's name, if the person's name is the brand. So for example, like if someone's going to hire a company they're probably going to do a search they're probably going to research that company top and bottom and that's specifically what i'm talking about so seo is being is about being found for specific keywords but if someone wants to hire you or do research on you that's what i'm talking about and Got the it. way to put out content is to have a lot of blogs um in your name or your brand's name Okay, so, so from a blogging content perspective, it's about sort of both combining the volume of content as well as having it be relevant to the, what the audience is looking for. Does I hear you right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it does. And again, you know, the volume of content, you don't have to put a whole, of course, the more that you can put out there, the better. But you don't have to be drowning in it. If, you know, if, if your employees aren't, if you don't have someone in your company that actually does that type of work or if it's just you doing the work you don't you you know if you want to do two or three posts a week that's perfectly acceptable so so that's great so we have one content strategy here is to develop the content that is specific to your brand and your company and your name so I think that's a really great way for a lot of companies who are concerned about the reputation management to sort of take back some of the ownership what are some of the other ways that companies can go and take ownership over their own brand, their names, and be able to be out there in a way that's very authentic and is going to attract customers into their business? Well, that's a great question. And one thing that we do is we create many, many, many profiles for our clients. And that's not so you can be posting a lot of content, but it helps rankings. Like the more high domain authority backlinks that you get to your website yes that's kind of the trick of of SEO and so the more that you can be creating and it we do research of any company or brand that we're trying to rank for we do research and we look at the top the Google likes the very top people obviously they're doing something right and so we do research how many social pro profiles they have so if they have 
200, we just do a little bit more of that. There's 600 some profiles, uh, social profiles built. And so if somebody is in a more competitive niche, if we need to do 550, that's what we do as well. Got it. So, so the other part of it too is, is that when you think about this from a perspective of digital marketing, you know, your brand is everything. It's what people do to validate whether or not they want to hire you. It's what they're going to do to see like the reviews of people who've worked with you before then. So when you really start an engagement with a company and you really look at sort of where they're at, what are some of the more common challenges besides a negative review that you might come across? And what are some of the things you do to overcome some of those challenges for these businesses? Well, you know, some it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative, negative review. It could possibly be a company that doesn't take the time to put information out about their business. Mm -hmm. So you were just talking a minute ago about content. It's great to put content out there. But if you don't have any business listings, if you don't put any information about all of your products and services, you're doing your company and your business a real disservice. So it's basically informing people about what you have to offer and so too much putting too much out there is never a bad thing but when you don't have anything out there or not enough out there that's kind of, that's a problem as well so it's just getting yourself out there so because if you think about it a lot of business owners they're taught to go to networking events yes. and get to know people so so it's kind of the same thing online. If you think about your competitors, you probably find a lot of information about your competitors. So it's, kind of, it's not a great thing if your business or your brand doesn't, if somebody can't find that information on LinkedIn or, you know, wherever your customers or the people that you're trying to track, wherever they hang out, if those people can't, see, if you, you can't be seen anywhere, that's a huge problem. And then also another thing is if you have too much personal things, on your own like social profiles that's not a good thing either you want to be very conservative about what you put there on out there on social media some people don't care i was having a discussion with somebody the other day um keep your political opinions to yourself because yes. you know there's going to be people that that aren't going to want to do business with you if you have a certain type of opinion that's not theirs. Yes. Well, and, and, and when politics specifically, you're about to alienate 50% of your potential audience, no matter what you say. <laughs> you'll get deeper with the 50% of the people that agree with you and you'll alienate the other 50%. Is that really what you want when you're starting out a business? Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's the thing is, you know, and, and everybody knows people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And yes. so if you're very strongly opinionated and put yourself out there, yeah, just like you were saying, it's it, that's not a good thing. You want to appear neutral, and you just want to appear that you know if you you know for whatever you're trying to sell, whatever solution that you're trying to provide, you are the person for them, and that's why it's so important to have a good reputation online because you want people to invariably say yes, this is the company or brand that I want to be supporting me. So what are some of the, I think you had like six essential components that you use to create viral content. Talk to me a bit about what those essential components are. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be really quick about that. And, um, and I actually, I have them written down. <laughs> Good. Go so, um, so, and this is really quick. So the first thing is it's got to be relevant about them. Yes. Right. Um, because obviously, you know, if it's not about them, if it's not about solving their problem, they aren't going to care. They aren't going to stick around. So the second thing is, is it's got to be valuable. It's got to help them, again, kind of solve the problem. The third thing is it's got to be understandable. It's got to be easy to digest. And that kind of goes back to um, the content itself. Like we've all read a book that um, it's hard to read. And so who wants to get through that whole darn book unless you're getting paid for it or if it's part of school and you have to take a test on it. So you want to have it understandable, easy to digest. Um, the fourth thing is you want to connect with them. You want to have your own personal stories. You don't want to rip off somebody else's content and, and seem like a phony. You want to be real and genuine and authentic. And the fourth thing is be complete. You got to include all the pieces. When someone reads an article or maybe watches a video that you do, you want them to walk away feeling satisfied, thinking that they know everything they need to know about what you just said. Like they don't have to keep digging into 
they don't have to keep looking for answers. Like what you've said, what you've stated is enough for them. And then the sixth thing is it's gotta be entertaining. Now, I, you know, I am not a very humorous person. Whenever I try to be funny, people take me seriously. And when, <laughs> I, when I don't try to be funny, people think I'm hilarious, you know? Um, but you just have to be engaging and want to have people watch. You can't like, you know, have a, well, and I'm saying this, like right now people are watching, maybe watching this video. If I was frowning, if I didn't have a good presence, um, people wouldn't want to be watching this right now. I love it. That's fantastic. And so like this sort of bringing all this home, what I'm really interested in is the people who watch this channel are always looking for innovation around marketing, right? So it's like, what are the marketing ways to basically attract and retain clients? And I think you've got about five different things you've come up with that help attract and retain your ideal customers. So talk to me a little bit about what you've come up with and how our, our audience here can leverage that. Sure. Well, okay. So the five steps are number one is attract. And how are you going to attract someone? You have to get to know the people, your ideal customers, you know, what their fears, frustrations, worries, all of that. You know, we talk about marketing messages. The more you can dial into these people, what keeps them up at night so you can solve their problem, or maybe what gives them joy. Whatever your product or service is, the more you can talk to them specifically, that's going to be able to attract them. So attract is number one. Um, and th the second thing is engage. Um, you want to show up and provide content that the audience needs. So hopefully the people listening to me right now want to be learning about how to improve their on online reputation. Uh, who doesn't if they're in business, right? Everybody in business always wants to be attracting more well, people. And, and what's fascinating about the engaged so that's, part. That's the second step. Um, the third thing is to capture. I'm sorry? No, I was going to say, what's really interesting about the engage side is that it really happens in different ways. You know, what is engaging for one group might be different from another. But what's fascinating is once you've attracted your ideal customers, if you don't keep them engaged, they're going to lose attention quickly and they're going to bolt. So it's really important that you have that engagement that really sort of shows I'm part of your tribe. You're part of my tribe. We have something that's really relatable together. And then you use that as an opportunity to sort of drive it for, forward. So great. And then you're going to go into capture. Yeah, I was going to go capture, but I was just going to say something just in relation to what you just said. That's why on a website, that's why people say, or it could be, a, you know, like a landing page. It's really important to, for people to know within the first, like, two seconds what your website is about right away. Right. Um, because otherwise, they're going to go away. Right. Absolutely. And I think what we used to call that the six second rule, I think it's now down to three seconds. You've got just, a, you got to capture their attention immediately and make sure that they know that they're in the right place. Otherwise they're going to bolt. So that's where you have high bounce rates and you see that people are coming to your site, but they're not finding what they're looking for and they're out of there. So you have a few seconds to really capture their attention, engage them, and then go back to the next step here, which is capture. So talking about capture. Yeah, so capture is, uh, we've all heard about lead magnets. So in order to get someone's information, um, and the reason why we do that, it's really important so you can continue to market to them. Because again, if somebody comes to your website or maybe sees some content, you know, they could be lost forever. But it, you can keep re-engaging with them if, if you give some an irresistible offer, if you yes. will, to them. Awesome. All right, so now we're going on to step four. So what's, what's step number four? We've already attracted them, we've engaged them, we've captured, their, captured them, now what? Well, actually this is step five. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. So step five is to retain these people. And that's just fulfilling your promise to them. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, they have to be a customer, but let's say if, if, if you're driving traffic, if they're interested in watching a video or reading content that you put out there, you have to fulfill that promise. Like if the, if the title says one thing, you have to fulfill that promise. It can't be, you know, uh, a false promise to drive traffic. All right. right, so just recap this for me. So number one was attract, yes? Yes, the, attract. The, and then number two was engage, yeah? Correct. And then capture? Yes. Okay, I missed one before retain. What's the number four? Oh, you know what, I'm so sorry. That, it's convert. Convert, okay, thank you, appreciate that. Yes. So, 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 so you've captured them, you've got them the permission to, te to connect with them and to market to them. What's the conversion step? So, Somebody has to really want to say yes to that. So, so capture is 
having some like a like um an opt-in a place to opt in and the the convert place is for them to really want to put in their information mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah so the idea yeah. of capture is maybe that sort of soft permission like maybe joining a newsletter uh having something that you can sort of reach them in the future but really convert is now they're actually buying service from you and they're actually engaging with you as a customer did i get that right um, well, they're in a way they're kind of bundled together. It really depends right. on what type of what what type of marketing you're doing. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, so, so if you're, go ahead. If you're do, so, for example, if you're doing like a Facebook ad, that process would that step would be different than in another scenario. Okay. Perfect. Good. Excellent. So first of all, I want to thank you for all of this great wealth of information you've shared with us today. Um, any parting thoughts, words, uh, insights that you want to share with our audience before we, we wrap this up? Well, I just want to thank everybody uh, for stopping by and watching this and hearing what I've had to say. And we didn't discuss this. Am I able to give something to people? Oh, yes, of course. Please, always. Please share uh, the wealth. So I have a I have a page on our website, which is, which is premierseoninjas.com slash, and then the name of your podcast. And on there, there's two things. Number one, there's an SEO audit, which will help people uh, make changes to their website so they can be ranking higher in the search engines. And th these are processes that we use ourselves, but we, this is a gift. Many agencies charge for this and we're not charging. We just want to give value to people. So that's number one. And then also we have a, some information, some content out there about how people can more specific, more specific steps, how they can improve their online reputation management, several steps they can do themselves or ask others to do for them. Beautiful. So we're going to say premierseoninjas.com slash Bill Carmody. They yep. go there and they'll be able to get their free evaluation from you as well as access the other tips that you're referring to. Is that right? Absolutely. And it's instantaneous. So they don't, they might have to wait 10 minutes, but it, it should be fairly quick. That's awesome. No, I think that's really wonderful. Thank you for adding value to the audience. I think they're going to really appreciate that. So, and uh, you know, I, Elizabeth, I just want to thank you for your time today. I think this has been very enjoyable. I enjoyed speaking with you and uh, I really appreciate you sharing your expertise with this group. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Bill, for having me. It was a pleasure. Awesome.